I am Horus. Who calls me? Uh, this is Max. Hello. Greetings. How can I help you? So my uh, first question is, uh, I just spoke to recently to Osiris and I, and also to Kufu. Uh, I, I, I spoke to her several times to Kufu. And uh, every time I saw what happened, I was speaking to mostly to the physical beings or the souls of the physical beings. But there are also mm, uh, gods with, with, with the same names. And there are lots of people like there was a worshiping of these gods for, for a long time. And uh, there was like churches de de devoted to ISIS and still people are. Uh, speaking to Isis in terms of uh, being a goddess. So what is the relationship between those um, God personalities and, uh, and those physical beings? The physical beings were aliens. And the, the God personalities came from the idea that they were greater and more... Uh, more like gods than they were like humans. Therefore, as they continued, people would worship them because they would suddenly disappear from one place and appear in another place. This was godlike behavior. They, were, they had technology on them that looked like jewelry, but they could use it to move about and communicate. And these things were not yet understood at all by humans. And so they were seen as gods and goddesses. And they had wisdom and understanding that humans did not have as well. And ideas about uh, how to do things and how to build things that humans did not understand the the way that they built the very large pyramids and things of this nature um, was astonishing to uh, humans. They would wake up in the morning and in the uh, the work that had been done during the night was unbelievable. Huge boulders moved into places lifted by anti-gravity sonic machines and things of this nature. So yes, they would be seen as gods and goddesses. And also there was, uh, we spoke to Rama and Hanuman and Sekhmet. I mean, uh, I cannot believe that when people prayed to them, there was no miracles happening. I'm sure the miracles were happening because, you know, otherwise those, um, those religious uh, traditions wouldn't survive. I mean, when people pray, say, to Sekhmet or Rama, miracles happen. So my question is, you know, is Rama personality not involved in, in, in that process? Of course. They leave behind some of their magic and some of their uh, power. But remember this. Also, faith, when people believe strongly enough that something will happen, many times it does. And if they are, if there are things there that are relics, they leave behind, be left behind some relics or stones or things of this nature. These things would have uh, supernatural powers uh, left in them so that these things could come about. Uh, so when people uh, communicate to you, are you participating or is it uh, all only their imagination? I participate whenever I can. Many try to channel me or talk to me, but they are not in the right frame of mind to do so. And so therefore, I do not. But a personality similar to mine does because they are creating it. Here we go. 
So that was my question. So sometimes it is you coming, and sometimes something else. Like there is. Go ahead. Yes, but I am here now. Okay. Because say we pray for Jesus to, to Jesus, and uh, sometimes it would be Jesus coming, and sometimes it would be a replacement of it, right? Of him, of of he them. Had seven aspects of himself put around the planet. And each aspect was slightly different. And so you might expect that they would all be exactly the same, but they are not. Yeah, at some point I formulated that, that for uh, every God there is a franchise of spirits and uh, whoever is available is just picked up and uh, pretend to be the, that God. And they kind of plug into, into, the, um, into the framework. It's something like that, yes. You have been frozen for a moment. Yeah. Maybe I said something sacrilegious, that's why I was frozen. All you right, let's... not hear anything sacrilegious. All right, can you reflect on that? Um, I can tell you that there are those that call in spirits that cannot handle the energy of these spirits or cannot handle what the spirits would want to say. And so they do not get the full entity, but perhaps a few words from them. And the rest is from their own thought processes. The, right. You will know these uh, channels because you will know that it's them speaking. Like there is a, uh, Yogananda mentions and several other uh, people uh, uh, mentioned the appearance of Divine Mother. So they pray to Divine Mother and Divine Mother comes and does the miracle. If that happens, I am not aware, but it could happen. There is a Divine Mother. God, God's personality is male and female. All right. So I just wonder if the Divine Mother comes in a human appearance, then uh, uh, that's not, not likely that she would have a human appearance. So she would have to appear in a way that it is pleasant, pleasing to the, of course. To the person. She would want not anyone to be afraid. Right. Or she would want not anyone to feel anything but the positivity that she has to offer. And if she appears in a different uh, facade, then that might not happen. Thank you. So my next question was about the Eye of Horus. Yes. Um, can you elaborate on, on that idea? The all-seeing eye is something that is a relic. It is not part of my face, but it is a relic called the, the Eye of Horus. It has much, many <laughs> and it is now back on the earth. Huh. It, has, it, it has the power of, of sight, which means you can use it to view distant places, you view uh, perhaps the past and very little of the future, but it can be used to view the future, but it is actually an all-seeing eye. It can see any place in the universe. Uh-huh. So it's a single object? It is a relic, yes, and it looks like an eye. It's a polished stone within uh -huh. the setting of an eye and the it is on earth at this time but it is not here it is in the oriental part of the world how is it associated with you how is it what how is it associated with you it's associated with me because i am the one that brought it to the planet okay is there a history behind that there is, it's not from, it was not made here on this world. 
It was made in the Orion Belt uh, many centuries ago, uh, more like many thousands of years ago, and it has an amazing powers of visual. It can see all over the universe. The reason that it was made was that there was at, at some point in the distant past, there was many wars and it was used to keep track of the enemy and used to see what was happening in distant places so that they could be prepared for a uh, war if they were, would have to be prepared. Now, it also was to check on family and friends, those in, uh, that were in higher places. They could check on their kingdoms and things if they were away from home. Is it conscious? That is a good question. There is a consciousness to it that is, there's a sentience to it that was given to it by the ancient magicians and those that created the relic, but it's not a, it is not a sentience that is one that thinks, but it okay. is aware of who is using it and does make does make changes for those that hold it in its hand. It, it, it knows the person that is with it. Okay. Are there like safeguards against the evil use? There are some safeguards. However, if you are someone that is of a malevolent nature, you may know how to change it for for your purposes, it is not used for malevolent purposes, but just for seeing, usually. Um, are you still in control of it? No, I. but I know where it is, and I could get it back if I wanted it. Oh, do you have a body? I do not have a body on this world, but that does not mean I still could not get it back. Uh, do you have a body on, on some other worlds? I am in spirit at this time, but I can still get it back. Wow. Uh, okay. Um, so some people say that well, there's a lot of teaching that I, of course, is symbolic representation of, of the pineal gland. In some ways, it is. It is attached to the third eye thought process. The third eye is the psychic is in the psychic realm on each individual. Even in many species, there is a third eye, which is the psychic realm. There are very few species that do not uh, have a psychic uh, ability, uh, or at least have not developed one at this point, but they all have some kind of uh, some kind of energy that they can use as a psychic energy. However, the third eye and the pineal gland work together. So yes, uh, the eye of Horus is very much like uh, the pineal gland in the fact that it can control what is being seen. Uh huh. Um, so, what was your role? Uh, what was your mission on Earth? I was here. I, I was a governor of the people. I needed uh, to have a lot of power here because I was another. I with ISIS and Osiris. We were controllers of this area and brought people in and out and were able to accommodate them and give them what they needed. I was set here to be in charge of that 
and uh, Osiris was the keeper of the gate. I was more of the person that planned where everyone was going to stay and what the meetings were, uh, where the meetings were going to be held and different things of that nature. Uh huh. And uh, can you play time it uh, relative to destruction of Atlantis? Can I what? Can you define the time? Uh, so we think that the destruction of Atlantis happened 23,000 years ago, and uh, the Pyramid of Giza was built. Uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza was built before that. Yes. And how is your uh, role? Your governance uh, was uh, placed in time relative to these two events. Well, we were there during Atlantis, but but we were not close to Atlantis. We were in Luxor mostly, but we did go to Cheops. But the thing is, the we we did travel back and forth to Atlantis occasionally uh, for different reasons for meetings and things of that nature. But uh, our headquarters was closer to Luxor. And sometimes we they would have us stationed at Cheops. So, but the time period was during Atlantis and at the end of Atlantis, sort of midway through the end. Did you uh, witness the destruction? Not firsthand, but I... But when it was happening, we did remote view it. Uh, where were from? What? Where, from, where, where were you located when it happened? We were in Luxor. Oh, so you were a nerd. Yes. And we actually moved to Cheops for a few days to have a closer view, but we did not go to Atlantis. We saw the destruction that was happening there. Many believe that Atlantis uh, was in the Pacific Ocean. It was not. It was in the Atlantic Ocean. And it extended into the Mediterranean. A small portion of it was like a, a large isthmus, if you will, or a large peninsula that extended into as far as Crete. <coughs> Crete is the last remaining portion of Atlantis. Uh-huh. So, um, how bad was the climate after the destruction? How bad was the climate? Yeah. It was bad for a while. Probably 70 to 80 years. So the humans survived? How many humans were there at that time? There were thousands of what were called humans there. Uh, but there were also thousands that were not there. Many millions, actually. I mean, you, you say there were millions of humans during the Atlantis? Yes, but they weren't all from Earth. Oh. The Anunnaki are close to humans. Uh -huh. They look like humans. They have similarities to humans, except humans don't have their wings. However, the wings were not part of their actual bodies. They were something added. They were mechanical wings, and they were there to help them uh, uh, do a fancy sort of transportation from one place to another because people would ooh and ah when they saw them glide and float and they loved that attention. So when you say humans, you meant Anunnaki? Um, some humans and uh, Anunnaki were, I say the Anunnaki looked very human to me, so I call them sort of humans. I couldn't tell them apart except the ones that put wings on. 
Right. <clears throat> so my, uh, I'm trying to understand the following thing. So I assume that Anunnaki created uh, Homo sapiens, and I assume they created it for the Homo sapiens after the destruction of Atlantis. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they created it before. I am not sure exactly when. I know that they were doing experimentation with DNA and human uh, beings on this world uh, for many years. And uh, when their final product was uh, done, I'm not sure. I know it was before we w were here. Ah. So you already dealt with, so you dealt with um, Homo sapiens during the Atlantis time. So Homo sapiens already were in Egypt, uh, part of your... Yes, uh, they were there uh, and they were already, had been created by whoever, the Anunnaki, Sophia, whoever it was that created them. So there were millions of us there. There were quite a few, but they many of them were destroyed by the flood. And oh. uh, because there was a lot of mutants there as well. So they needed, uh, Enlil did not like the mutants and did not like how the, the humans were treating the humans. So he did not like the humans and the mutants together. So he, he destroyed a great deal of them, a lot of information as well. Now, Enki saved uh, some humans and some animals and things of that nature so that not everything would be completely wiped out from that era. So is Enki and Noah the same person? What? Is Enki and Noah the same person? They have the same name, yes. They could be of uh, Enki and No were had the they were called the same thing. It depends on what language you were speaking and who was talking and they had he had a couple different names, yes. No, I'm talking about saving the the humans from the flood. So Enki saved the humans from the flood and Noah saved the humans oh, no, from the no, flood. No, no, no. Noah oh uh, no, uh, Enki and Noah were very different, and Noah didn't arrive on the planet until thousands of years after this flood. So they had taken the story of the flood and used it for spiritual purposes later. And they actually were not the originators of the story. So the destruction of, of Atlantis and the flood, are these the same event or two different events? Two different events. What happens first? Um, the destruction of Atlantis. All right. So 23,000 years ago, Atlantis was destroyed, and there was 70-something years of darkness. Is it about right? No. Well, darkness, I guess that would be somebody's opinion, yes. I mean, 70 years of bad climate. Yes, bad climate. Yes. Uh huh. I, I mean, because I assume there was like some explosions and there was a cloud of dust in the air, but you're saying yeah, it's not as bad. There was much, yes, the climate was bad, but it was not necessarily a terrible time for the world at that time. Um, there was a lot of other things going on that were positive, but um, yes, the destruction of Atlantis did bring down the population for several years. Uh, but of course, uh, everybody recovered from it eventually. But the weather so, did stay bad for a while. So what, so, and then we, we see that uh, the population of humans, our uh, archeological studies show that the population of humans about 5,000 years ago was really small and then it started growing so we can we can estimate just by archaeology that humans had a very primitive culture 5,000 years ago so between 23,000 years ago the destruction of Atlantis and 5,000 years ago there was a 
uh, demise of human of humanity. That is correct. So how did it happen? What was happening? Well, first it was Atlantis, and then it was the flood, and then it, there was very few left, and um, there was humans in Egypt, there was humans in uh, the Orient, there was humans, there was a lot more humans than they give credit for, but um, I guess some of the civilizations did not uh, show uh, much human uh, artifacts or whatever, but there are civilizations from humans and others that that are 20,000 years old. So, and they're starting to find those now. I see. So in some areas there were like uh, very primitive cultures and in other areas you, uh, there were like more advanced ones. Like Yes, at the end of the Ice Age, there was there were still humans. Uh, how about the uh, India? Was there continuity continuity from Atlant pre Atlantis from Atlantis times and yes, there and, was. And now? Right, there and uh, things, there uh, there are much in the Sumerian tablets that have still not been deciphered. And you will find that there is information in the Sumerian tablets to support humanity being there for a very long time. Right, right. So then the Aryans came in, uh, in India. Can you time it uh, when it happened? When did it happen? No, they came many times. Um, All right. In, in those areas, they came as much as um, 7,000, 8,000 BC. Uh huh. But I don't know the, all that history, so I'm not the one to ask about that. So when did you? I've been there quite a long time. All right. And I they, mean, uh, they write about their spacecrafts. They write about um, different things that have become a legend, the flying carpets and the things of that nature, which were actually flying, uh, flying stairways in some in some instances. Um, it was a very interesting age because they they used their technology rather freely in the Indian and Persian areas. So what is the uh, aliens from Orion? Orion and Sirius. All right. Uh, are you, were you connected as Quarus? Were you connected to Sirius? That area was more connected to Sirius than Orion. We were more connected to Orion in this area and in England and in uh, Peru. These areas were more Orion. All the places where stargates were built are Orion edifices. Uh -huh. So how long did you, were you on Earth? When did you leave? Uh, we never left. Okay. We left, so, I mean, the, our full presence perhaps is not seen, but we really never left. Ah. Can you elaborate on that? Um, well, I can to some extent. There are many Orions on this planet that have been grandfathered in because, the, as you know, no one's allowed to come or go on this planet uh, as far as being in the third dimension. But there are Orions that are in the third dimension. There are Pleiadians in the third dimension. There are uh, even other species such as Nords and in the third dimension that are there. But they, they, are, they look human. They have taken on that transformation. They, uh, they live in your cities and uh, they, they can uh, 
get away with it because they have the technology to do so and they can hide very easily from humanity. If they need to show who they really are, they can do that as well. There are also subterranean species such as the Agonian and the Golden, people from the Himalayas and the Draconians that are also there under the Earth's surface. So there are several cultures of Draconians and dragons. Okay. Wow. Uh, when you say grandfather, then what do you mean? When that means that before they made these rules and regulations that people couldn't come to this planet or people couldn't leave this planet, there were many still there. And when they made the rules, there were people still here and uh, they just left them. Right, I understand. And uh, personally, as a sportist, uh, what was your timing? My timing was, I was there for, in and out for uh, about 180 years. I see, uh-huh. And um, can you tell a little more about your life? What is there to tell? I was more of a leader. <laughs> That is why I was there. I was I had leadership responsibilities. Uh huh. So you were a blue avian. I was. How tall were you? Well, most blue avians are in the nine foot range. We that came to Earth made ourselves a little smaller. But we were still in the seven foot range, six and a half to seven foot. Uh, did you build any pyramids? Did we what? Did you build any pyramids? We know how the pyramids were built, but I was not in charge of that. But yes, the Orions did build the pyramids. Um, I know Khufu was. Uh, uh, reincarnated or took the bodies of many pharaohs and uh, kept the Egypt going. Did you do the same? I did not have to. My, my persona was well known and I kept the same one the whole time that I was visiting this planet. So all, all that activity spanned only 100 something years? 185 I think, something like that. Um, what's your involvement in current uh, Earth's uh, development? Um, that I cannot tell you. I cannot. There are many reasons for the development of Earth right now, but humans cannot know exactly what is happening. It, that would take away from the outcome. So you participate as a spirit? I am participating in spirit, yes. I am bringing information to this planet. How difficult is it to work from the spirit compared to working from the body? I'd say it's easier. So you have clear channels of communication with the physical beings? There are four beings that I have clear channel with. And your limitations are much smaller in spirit world because uh, you can uh, access more information? My job is not as large in the spirit as it was on the planet. Oh, I, I see. A larger job there. This, in the spirit, I have a much less of responsibility, but yet it is important what I do. Um, are you, uh, who, who are there any entities who work with you that we know, like uh, maybe Rama, Hanuman, uh, uh, 
Ganesh, any of those? I work with Toth. I work oh. with um, uh, Kutumi. I work with also with Buddha. I work with many of those that were here before. When they say Toth, is it the same as Khufu? Yes, Toth and Khufu experienced the same bodies at some times. Oh, these are two different uh, spirits? No, not really. It's very difficult to tell you how that works, but Toth and Khufu have different personalities, but the same, they use the same body and they had, they uh, lasted quite a long period of time on this planet. Is it the incarnation, two different incarnations of the same soul? It is something of that nature. The body that they used was indestructible to some extent on this planet. Uh, I'm talking more about personalities. Why would they have, uh, do they belong to the same soul or not? They were not part of the same soul, no. Oh, so there's a same body. So two different souls use the same body. Correct. Ah, thank you. Who else should you, would you recommend me to meet? What I would what? Who else would you recommend me to meet over channeling? Well, you wanted to meet Ark Norton. Right, right, right. He was a unique individual. Much of his uh, development was destroyed. Basically, whatever he created was forgotten very fast. Yes, but he was very interesting and very unique. Right. You Did you like him? Wish. Toth is my favorite, always. Mine too. And Kofu, Kur how you pronounce it. They're my favorites because they are the wisest and most expanded beings. Uh -huh. That is what I would tell you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. My time uh, ran, ran out. So um, I think what I would like you to do for the closing is to give a sample of your uh, Language, maybe you give us a blessing of possible. Wah, hootia, ye heave ya, mock, wak washa, nahi, inkum wa, you watch yan du quati, yapli, na rahata, nashim du roda aya, kanzequatsa, shim du prot, potaka, eskazuti. Shingrivrata Frahit. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Travel well and live a long life. Thank you. Hello? Hello.